this time it's personal hello everybody out there in rider nation how's everybody today after that display of the saskatchewan rough riders last night against the bc lions oh boy uh let me tell you it's getting more difficult to be a, a rider fan and proud of the rough riders this is a been a long stretch of losses and a long stretch of bad team this is going on the two-year mark a pathetic football fans deserve better folks fans deserve better than that they're sure major talk of i'm not renewing my season tickets and i'm not going to spend good money on watching that kind of product and you know i can't blame them one bit uh, there's hard times i went through a lot of hard times watching the damn rough riders i'll keep going watching the rough riders i'll always be a rough rider fan no matter what but i don't blame these people for spending what not wanting to spend their hard cash on watching that product on the field it's gonna show up in the attendance here real quick like myself i'm lucky when i get a chance to attend a, a rider game oh blowing a whistle over there in the station now when i get a chance to um watch rider games and go to the games i always get good deals from friends of mine and if at the last game i went to season ticket holder gave me their tickets it's really nice i'm not in a position to spend a lot of my, my disposable income on going down to the rough rider games like i know how much it costs to get down there just with gas and some people stay overnight i could never do that i could never afford that i was lucky i had places to stay but usually i head home and by the time you get home it's a long day you uh, you catch it it's so long you can listen to the the uh after game show on ckrm and it's just about over by the time you get home from the the game but you're not home till one o'clock in the morning so it's a big commitment by people even in regina if you live there the cost of the tickets you know like i know lots of people that have premium tickets good seats they had to downgrade because of the the cost increase as this world's becoming more of the have and have nots every day and the price is going up so much and and you're putting a product like that they know rentals will be here in the belly aches let me tell you there'll be lots of letters going in saying forget the season tickets you better give us major incentives to even think of renewing the the uh commitment to go to every game yeah it's uh downtime for the rough riders that's for sure and yeah, fans are really up in arms they want to get rid of dickinson and o'day and i don't think that's going to happen until the end of the season so yeah i guess that all depends how much outcry there is reynolds might want to save his ass and try to keep some of these people happy that are bailing out but I don't think it's going to help the team any. I think more of the team. It's too late to change coaches right now, and who would they get anyway? You know, nobody would sign up anyway. Maybe they can promote somebody in house, but not going to help the situation. It's next season. They ox them. The only guy I'd, I'd like them to see them find some fresh blood. I keep rotating these same donkeys through the the uh, system. Seems to be the way of the CFL. I wonder if they could convince Flurry over there from the 
from the Huskies to take the job. A lot of these guys love where they're playing though and they love teaching new kids. And you know, like it all depends what kind of contract they could offer Fleury, but back in the day, they went after him a few times to play for Saskatchewan because he was a local boy and, and he was a bloody good lineman uh, for Montreal. Be nice to give that guy a chance. That'd be my pick anyway. Dickinson's not practicing on Tuesday because they didn't have legs. Well, Dickie, that didn't really help. From what I've seen, it didn't really help. You know, they always seem to still run out of steam and in the, in the uh, they run out of steam in the second half and what killed them in that game too was the, the score right near the second, the end of the first half. I was a killer and a deflator and we don't need that the way we play the second half. I watched it pretty fast on tape because I taped it. I went to the uh, U of S Husky game. They're playing the UBC Thunderbirds. If anybody's interested, I'll have a little clips of that game last night. Boy, was that game worth going. I'm sure glad I went to the game. It was a barn burner game. And those guys showed some heart with the Huskies. They were playing an undefeated team and at 4-0 and and, they're, and uh, they took them down a notch. They kept the, their pace with them all game and it was a hard fought game. And back and forth, it was really exciting. Then I got home and had to watch that Rough Rider game, which I feared would be exactly the way it turned out. They did one thing that I said in my last, in the pregame video here. They had to stop the run. Uh, they stopped the run pretty well, but they did that by the old method of Peter Pay and Paul. You know, they rob one guy and to, to cover this and let the other thing go, and that's Dulkey to your safety. You know, on the one play where the guy was so wide open downfield. Everybody's blaming Marshall or whoever it wasn't. Dulkey was just about halfway to the line of scrimmage. And I'm sure Adams, he goes, oh, yummy, yummy, look at this. The safety's not even attempting to cover our receivers and throws one right down the middle. Uh, didn't take an idiot to figure that one out. But, you know, plus Dulkey's making most of the tackles. Your safety. What's that tell you? Another move that's not working is putting Moncrief at halfback. You know, he's, he should be playing the strong side linebacker. And uh, they could have kept Washington at that halfback position because he just, he, he did the best he could, but he couldn't keep up to a lot of those guys. He was just getting blown right by and didn't have a hope in hell. Blew right by him. Yeah, like I said, I didn't, I haven't watched the game uh, the second and third time to see what happened. And what I, what I did see, yeah, you know, Marshall was doing the same old things. He did cause a couple bad plays. But what really pisses me off about Marshall is his attempts at tackle. He does not even put an effort into it sometimes. You know, he just falls by the guy. Never ever blows, never wraps up. He plays like he'll, he's not wanting to get injured ever. He's not sacrificing his body for the team, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, that can't happen. And 
Dean was not much better. They actually didn't play too bad on offense. All right, Dalagala, the same old thing with him. I'll have to watch the replays again, but he missed a few guy, guys overthrowing and one uh, wheel route to, Hen, uh, to Hicks, and that would have been a good play. That play is going to work in the future. You know, swing it out to, on that wheel route to Hicks, and he just, they just weren't on the same page in that one. But with Jake, he's still got to learn how to bail out of that pocket once it gets tight in there and he can't see nobody. He just turtles. He goes down and turtles. You got to try to extend the play. And just like Adams, just look over on the other side of the, the field and watch Adams. My thoughts on Adams is he's either hot or real cold. And he was hot last night. Yeah, he was hitting guys pretty good and picking off the the backfielders like one after the other. He spread the ball around to everybody. You know, they'd be BC's gonna be a great cup contender, I think for sure, because well not for sure, it'll all depend on Adams. I know the quarterback is easy to say, but he can either be real hot or cold. And uh, he can throw them away just as good as the next guy. Zach Clara's doing the same thing, so. It'll be a run for the Cup. Toronto will be there too. Like I'd like to be in the position that Toronto's in. You know, those guys are smart. That Dimwitty, he didn't even play. I haven't watched that whole game, but he didn't even have starters in there. And, you know, Olette didn't even hardly run the ball. He's resting these guys. Where O'Shea there in Winnipeg, he's the opposite. He likes his guys to have playing time. He takes a, a chance on getting injuries, but I like his way of thinking myself. But these guys, you, you keep your stamina up by playing in a real game and bashing against uh, real opposition. But that's not our coach. Dickie says, ah, oh, the legs are no good. We gotta rest them, have them watch tape. Maybe send them to a spa. You know, that don't work. You gotta work these guys and get their stamina up, stamina up. As you can tell, I'm pretty frustrated, but you know, it's not over yet though. There's still time for a miracle turnaround. But if they don't play half decent against Hamilton and then Calgary beat them at least, you know, you might as well throw the towel in. Maybe then they'll, uh, I don't know. I really don't know the answer. What happened to our defense, which was so good. I don't know if the team has just lost faith completely in the coaching and given up the ghost, but it's still got time. They really do, you know. I know it sounds stupid, but you just have to get a ticket to the show and then show up at the show. Yeah. But making the playoffs for us, you know, unless they improve vastly, it'll just be a walkover game for whoever we play in the semifinal, and it's going to be away. And our away record, just go look at that. It's pathetic. You want your team to be getting some momentum going into the playoffs. And that's a big if, if the playoffs. Might not even make the playoffs the way it's going. Crossover, that's a laugh. You just have to hope for Edmonton and Calgary to keep blowing it. Yeah, but you want your team to have some sort of momentum. And, and gaining some some experience and looking tougher and tougher but we're just staying the same level of play the last several games actually the whole season we're quite fortunate to have the wins we got a lot of people tune out when when uh, the game's out of control and and lousy with me I'm the exact opposite that's when I really focus in which players are 
mailing it in and which players are still going. And that's why I'm down on Marshall. Ah, oh, gee, you should just see him after. If he's not involved in the play, and uh, he's got a chance to get over there and get in the action, he just puts his hands on his friggin' hips and watches. Now, well, if he wants to do that, he should be watching from the stands. Like my dad used to say, if it was up to him, me, I'd, uh, buy him a bicycle and send him home against the wind. You know, he's playing useless. There's several others I can name. Maybe if I got time this week, I'll, I'll put some clips up of these guys. Makes me laugh, they didn't, I don't think they even got a penalty. Well, they had that one crap penalty against uh, where they called pass interference, offense and defense. That was a baloney call. And we had, I think, one more holding. I can't remember, but at least there was no penalties. I think the rest felt sorry for us, maybe. Yeah. We were playing so pathetic, they didn't need their help. Anyway. Looks like it might rain today, but I hope not. I want to get over to the, I think the Husky, I mean the Hilltops play today against the Regina Rams. And I think it's a night game. I'll have to check into that, but uh, if the weather's favorable, these old bones can't take too terrible of weather conditions. I'll just bundle up and go watch that game. Should be a good game. The Hilltops are really playing good this year. They always seem to come up with new players. That's the riders' biggest problem. They don't seem to have any new talent. Like they brought in a whole slew of DBs. You know, you'd think you'd have found some person that's half decent to take over for some of these guys. But they just don't seem to have anybody that they even want to try. That was crazy. And Albright, what I've seen, played a fairly decent game again. Even had a sack. And, uh, I'll have to replay the game, like I said. I'll replay the game and uh, maybe grab a few clips off of it and, and uh, get back to you guys later here. Again, I'd really like to thank all my, my subscribers. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. It really helps me out, makes me feel good anyway about something. It's bloody depressing the way they're playing. Had a high after the U of S game though. It was a really good game to watch. Hopefully the Hilltops do the same thing today. I think it's today anyway, I'll have to check. Uh, but thanks to everybody again for watching and I'll get back to you soon here with another complaint video. Maybe I have some positive plays I can show you too. Anyway, till next time, go Riders, go. Let's make us, these Rider fans proud and win some bloody football games.